I'll give you a show. I'll give you a show. I'll give you a show. Who would have thought that you were going to last a year? Honestly, I would have taken the under. This is wild. <laughs> we'll both do shots. I just want an excuse to do shots. I'm so tired. I love that you want to do shots. This is great. Yeah, I know exactly what it's like to be a professional athlete. KD can stand on 18th Street and still punch Michael Rappaport on 17th Street because he's so <laughs> long. So We watched the Super Bowl, I mean, well, obviously from different experiences. Uh, I would never play in a Super Bowl yet. I mean, I'm taking Judd Apatow's masterclass right now, so oh, wow. I know a little bit about this. What are, it's like oh, that. No, you I mean, got this is great. This is great content for my editor to edit out later. He's just like, oh, Julie's back on her bullshit again. Hey guys, welcome on into Drinks with Banks. I'm Julie Stewart Banks, and this is our 100th episode. I quite literally cannot believe that we have done 100 episodes, probably 99 of them from my apartment. It has been one heck of a ride. Thank you so much for drinking and binking alongside with us. And what better way to celebrate the 100th episode than by talking about the best time of the season that, of course, is the NHL playoffs. And before you change the channel, just acknowledge it. Maybe even if you do not like the good old hockey game, you have to give it some respect. Put some respect on that name or whatever, uh, you know, Rodney Dangerfield said in Caddyshack. Uh, the fact is that the NHL playoffs is always always a bloodbath and it has not disappointed this year. And so this is just perfect timing for our guest here today. I'm so thrilled to have on someone that you know well, if you are a hockey fan, you're a fan of sports, but also one of my good friends. And that is none other than ESPN's John Bucci Gross. And I want to, first of all, Bucci, thank you so much for joining us. It is great to see you again, but also toast to the fact that you guys NHL on ESPN yeah. is back and we are rocking and rolling. So cheers to you, my friends. Thanks so much for joining us he here today. <laughs> I love it. Yes, let's get that whiskey. Oh, mm -hmm. So, whew, man, so you must feel when you heard the news of the NHL coming back to ESPN. Huh, what was that like? Oh, it was like, you know, we had some rumblings for actually a couple years out that looked pretty good. And then a couple months out, I heard that it was going to happen. You know, the announcement's coming in February. All those Canadian friends out there, they know, they know everything. Uh, get yourself a good <laughs> Canadian friend if you want to know what's going on with the hockey. So, uh, yeah, but you never know. You know, it's like the birth of a child. It's a lot of things. When it actually happens, you can prepare all you want, and you can uh, think about it all you want, and you can know it's going to happen. Hey, they're inducing next Thursday at 4. But <laughs> it's so different when it becomes official. The baby's here, baby, and uh, or the announcement is here. So, yeah, it was a great day, the outpouring from socially, especially social media from people. I think it probably blew away our executives. I don't think they had any idea. There was this pent-up nostalgia and excitement that those four letters can bring. Uh, especially kind of that little engine that could lead like mm -hmm. the NHL is. You know, they, they scrap and they battle. So it, it means something. And I, like I said, I think it was bigger than they thought. It was a little bigger than I thought, too. I knew it would infuse the whole league, players, fans. It's just I just knew it would. Uh, but it was it definitely exceeded expectations. We hope to see you doing play-by-play -play on ESPN's coverage of NHL because you've been doing it for the last couple of years, a, a lot of college hockey, of yeah. course. And, you know, we're with hockey fans, and, and I've seen this when Canada changed the rights with CBC and Sportsnet and TSN and all this kind of stuff. But hockey fans, um, you're not reinventing the wheel with the rights, but yeah. you want to maybe – add things or change with the times or I don't know what everything yeah. is, is moving at such a high speed these days. Yeah. What do you expect? Uh, how do you think ESPN is going to make this unique if at all? That's a good question. Really good question. Um, you know, we tend to keep it pretty solid, you know, whether it's our college football coverage, our game presentations or the, the network uh, takes great pride in that um, just to do a good job for the viewer, you know, um, 
you, you don't want to, there's a lot of these camera angles have become established, whether it's football, whether it's hockey. And the reason why is because they're good. It's the best angle. Uh, you don't have to, you know, I like, I always like perspective. I always uh, get kind of perturbed when after a team wins or a no hitter or a championship, I feel like directors get too tight on the action. They get, they, they mm. like tight shots. I think they think like Scorsese and stuff like that. I like perspective. I like wide shots. I want to look at multiple things. I want to kind of take it in. Sometimes I think they get too tight. So I don't expect too much. You know, obviously we're getting more data, those kinds of things. I always like the NASCAR arrows when cars come around the corner. I think we're seeing mm. a hockey broadcast implement. Maybe not when the game yes. is on. but Notice right that the, too. Yeah, right before the face-off. I like the arrows. I like, And when I do play-by-play -play for college, like you mentioned, I like saying who's on the ice. This line's on the ice. These are the two D pair just to give you perspective. And then I don't really do radio call ping pong call but i do like to say who's out there because it's hard to tell sometimes in hockey because obviously they change on the fly um and a lot of and some players are behind the play so i like doing that i like that set up graphically that you can show who's on the ice but for the most part man you know between the tackles as they say you know three yards in a cloud of dust it's, it's a great game as it is it's a great televised game i always thought that um line that it's it's a great game in person not so much yeah. on tv and like i've always thought it was a great game on tv since i was a kid I was I know. Yeah. standard definition on my parents furniture console tv you know and then with high definition obviously it's much better big giant 55 60 70 80 inch tvs even better so i think it's a great television game and it's two hours you know how long it is during the regular season mm -hmm. it's not baseball it's not forever even football college football is three and a half four hours yeah, long you know how long it yeah. is until the playoffs but regular season you know the window <laughs> It's solid and it's good. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's so exciting. And you mentioned, you know, even watching it on TV, watching and we're shooting this on a Monday. But the fact that the Oilers and the Jets went to overtime last night and I was like, man, it sounds so wild there. But it's like there's no fans like it just it just even I mean, it it felt wild. Obviously, they had really good crowd noise, but it just it the game still works is, is what we're saying. It does. But what you are busy with all the time, especially now with so many overtimes, as we mentioned, is the Bucci Overtime Challenge, which has become huge. It is massive. Um, first of all, like, where would you want to take, like, could you make this a show, do you think? Like, could this be? It probably could this has go? potential. Yeah, I think you're, it, it, I can't believe the legs it's had. I thought it would fade by now. Um, even the name, Bucci Overtime Challenge, is so clunky. If, if I had gone, you know, nine years ago and I started this and went to a focus group or some sort of a think tank, they probably would have come up with something shorter and different. But I think that's part of the appeal. It's just very literal. It's kind of, it's just almost like a tongue in cheek kind of thing. I did it on a whim. And then I said, oh, maybe I'll start giving away some T-shirts and then selling them on the side and people can buy one if they want. Just a small thing. And then it kind of grew into this thing. And I've added hashtag call it chalky as well. Um, but, yeah, there's probably a gambling aspect to it, you know, whether it's draft. Definitely. Or you could play for 99 cents in states that it's legal and give away cash. You're right. And I, actually, the show part's actually – I thought about doing – I'm glad you said that. Like after an overtime game or multiple games, go on IG Live and just talk about the overtime. Yeah. Maybe you reveal the winners on IG Live or something or some other, you know, platform. Or, so, yeah, it probably has potential. I'm not real smart on sitting around the corner. You know, maybe you are. You sure. definitely got to bring it in, you know, with all this new live to play gaming stuff like with ESPN when you guys have the rights, have it like, oh, everyone put in your picks right now, you know, get that in there. Also trade. You obviously trademarked it, right? Yeah. OK, yeah, yeah. You trademarked it. OK, good. You own the rights to this. Uh, I will not trademark it during this commercial break. Um, <laughs> I have a question for you on how you now if maybe if you learned anything about what to look for in terms of picking your overtime winners. We'll have that on the other side of Drinks with Things with John Bougiegrass. Don't go anywhere. Hey guys, welcome back into Drinks with Things for our 100th episode. I'm JSB alongside ESPN's John Bucci, guys. We're sipping on a little Irish whiskey here today because why not? It's NHL playoffs, baby. Mm -hmm. Red West, uh, it was either that or Green Spot, which someone told me about. I'm looking forward to trying the Green Spot, but we're going Red West. Well, we've got some so. very interesting options here. I'm a bourbon guy. I'm a bourbon guy, neat, but I just got into these Irish whiskeys. Actually, I read Wright Thompson's book, Pappy Land, about you know, the whole Ooh. Pappy Land uh, Winkle kind of craze. 
and uh, his drink, Julian uh, Van Winkle, is his Red Breast 12. That's his go-to after dinner okay. drink. So he said, I'm going to try that, and I love it. That's good to know. I, I got to read that book. I, I've been told by other guests um, about Ray Thompson's book. I mean, I'll read anything, um, will, but it's really good. <laughs> I um, was mentioning beforehand, we were talking about the Bucci Overtime Challenge, and um, whenever it happens, like, uh, whenever overtime happens, my boyfriend and I are like, okay, we got to get our picks in, like, right now. What I look at is time on ice for the most part. So I think, well, then these guys are going to most likely be on the ice, more likelihood to score, da, 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 da. What have you found to be any kind of analytic that mm -hmm. helps in terms of figuring out your overtime winners? I think certainly you could probably look at a trend, a guy who's, you know, even just basic shots on goal, ice time, like you said, especially from the forward group. But, but really, as we have come to understand, it's pretty random. It's a random event because it could go two overtimes, coaches can't just shorten the bench like a five minute regular season overtime when you know the fourth line's not gonna play. So uh, and that's why it translates so well to the postseason. People want me to do regular season Bucci overtime challenge, but obviously it's three on three, it's a different game. It's just not the same. Mm -hmm. Um, and and often, often a game goes to a shootout, then the game kind of fizzles. But it's really a random event. You know, Gordy Howe, Mark Messier, but, uh, I think Mario Lemieux, and even Ovi don't have an overtime playoff goal. Wow. You know? So it's picking that sixth defenseman or that fifth defenseman. Mm. Because if Ovi scores 500 people on my, you know, I search. I, I tell people use the hashtag because I do it for the search bar. I put in a hashtag Booch Overtime Challenge with the name of the goal scorer, then all the winners come up. That's how I find them. Um, so if you pick Ovi, there's going to be 700 people that have Ovi. But if you take Nick Schultz, that might be 42. So now your odds are much better. And like I said, it's really the, they really both have the same, it's pretty much the same chance of scoring. Now, obviously not over like a career or a season, but in one playoff game, it's pretty even when you're rolling four and using three D pair. Now, uh, certainly top two line, top two D pair, maybe there's evidence yeah. that you're better off doing there. But again, the pool is smaller the more random dude you take. Yeah, that's true. Actually, as just a little note, I picked Alec Martinez in the 2014 Stanley wow. Cup playoffs, and everyone in the in the media one room was like, who picked Alec Martinez? I was like, I did, because it was just random at that moment. And, of course, he ended up winning. Um, and I, I thought that's my biggest accomplishment other than the telly of which is right there. But let's move on to the NHL. We want to get into these playoffs um, what's your favorite storyline so far? This is a Monday. We know that both the Blue, or excuse me, the Blues, yeah, the Blues have gone home. The Avs and the Bruins have moved on so far. Yeah, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, I like the Nathan McKinnon storyline. Stealth, would he be the first player taken in a league-wide NHL draft? Um, if every player became available. Uh, he's an absolute wagon. That team is loaded. And the team with the most best players usually win. I know we like to dive deep into numbers and stuff, but they might have the most best players. And that team usually wins. Do they have the goalie? We'll find out. Vegas winning a cup so soon. I think they're a great model on how all sports leagues should treat expansion teams. Mm -hmm. These are paying half a billion dollars or more. Let them be good right away. You wouldn't open up a Starbucks and let roaches on the floor. Like you wouldn't do that. You mm -hmm. want them to succeed. And so you, you, you want, you look at Atlanta, poor Atlanta with the flames and the thrashers. Hockey will never work in Atlanta because the team sucked. They always did. And so there was no chance it was going to work. So uh, th I think they're a great model and it'd be very interesting. Mark andre Fleury, again, that would put him in a pantheon if somehow he leads them to a cup, which I think he could. And really the Maple Leafs, I love Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. I think they have what it takes to be champions. Matthews is the best goal scorer in the NHL, and um, I, 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 you know, I just I like him personally. I root for him, and so I just wonder though if the Leafs aren't quite there yet um, to try to deal with. Both. I don't know. I think I, I unbiasedly think that the Leafs are probably there. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, so considering the Leafs come out of the North, who are the three other teams in your Final Four? Knowing that we have to go to break soon. Uh, you know, I'm going to go Leafs Bruins because well, I can't figure out what the points now. What's what Colorado? Actually, Colorado would play Boston, right? If those two make it, so I'd probably go. Although that final four, yeah. So yeah, I think I'll go Boston, Colorado, um, Tampa, and Toronto. 
Okay, all right. Well, Toronto definitely not going to be able to get out of that Final Four, but what a Final Four that would be. We've got a whole <laughs> lot more to come with John Bucci-Cross from ESPN. This is Drinks with Banks. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks of Things. 100 episodes in the books. Who would have ever thought we would have lasted that long, especially in a pandemic? But we did it. YOLO. And we have John Bucci Grass on to help celebrate. Can I, say, can, I say something? can I say something? I'm a big fan of the Fubo with my hotel plastic cup here. I, uh, I, cut, the cord. I cut the cord. I cut the cord. I got the Fubo. And it's like made for Bucci. I, I swear, it, it's, it's the streaming service made for Bucci. I could not, it's like 10 stars. I couldn't be more pleased. The app on my well, phone that is great. The app on my phone is unbelievable. It never n not works. I love, I am so pro Fubo. This is amazing. Now, this is our first commercial that we have created for Fubo that we did not have to well, pay yeah, for. It was just, it was an organic commercial. I did not tell you I was going to say that. You didn't know I had. The Fubo. No, that was great. The Fubo is numero uno. I love the orange app icon on my phone of the Fubo. It always makes me happy. Great. Okay. Well, I hope that bought me some brownie points with uh, the CEO and the boss. Okay. Well, we are. I hope it bought me some actual brownies. You can mail them to ESPN. I love brownies. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of ESPN, you are heading to Sports Center later on today. We know that this is Kenny Maine's last day. You are coming on to do the show right after he will finish his final show. We yeah. know that this is a business, but we know that we get to know people like family. What kind of uh, emotions do you kind of feel around just him now leaving? Yeah, it's kind of multifaceted. You know, you think about your own career mortality, knowing that it can end at any time. You got to be prepared. Um, obviously when I make friends, I don't let go of people. Like once you're my friend, like you're my friend forever. I don't have, I never had any grudges or fallouts with all my friends going back to kindergarten. In fact, uh, my, my best friend from kindergarten to fifth grade, a guy named Greg Steve, then I moved to Ohio from Pennsylvania and life goes on. And I think we might've reconnected once a million years later, but now our sons are college roommates and they're both named Jack. It's like, how funny is life like that? You know, but I just, I just eventually stayed in touch and stayed in touch and stayed in touch. So I just, you know, and in this business, as you know, you make friends and there's so many, one of the best parts of the business is meeting cool, interesting people. And Kenny's certainly one of them. So yeah, you think about, you know, the, his trepidation going out in the world now, I'm sure he'll be fine. Uh, but you think about your own career mortality and the people leaving the place you work at, you know, I've been there, I'll be there 25 years in October. So a lot of people wow. have been gone. So yeah, you you have that mourning period where you don't see those people every day. And I'll just miss the Bucci main icon when we come up on a sports yeah. center. You know, normally the, on sports center, the person with seniority sits screen left. So that person oh, the left, okay. back in the day, they took it very seriously. I've never taken it seriously. But no, that's my chair. I've been here longer than you. Uh, but Kenny, I had to convince him, Kenny, I need to sit in that chair. So when they put the graphics up, they could put Bucci main. So the kids kind of get a chuckle out of that. You know, the over 50 crowd doesn't know what Gucci Mane, who Gucci Mane is, but the, you know, the, the younger kids do. So Gucci Mane, for the joke, let me sit in that chair. And he was always cool. I love that. If I believe he shows up, no, he sits in that chair. No, yeah, definitely not. I'd be like, I need to sit in this chair because my face is not symmetrical. So that, that's just a different issue. Yeah, you want your better but side. Fact, like, uh, yeah, I'm like sitting on person, whatever side looks best. But um, no, you made a, a great point there. And also the fact you did mention your son, who is a golfer, um, Indiana University at Pennsylvania, is, is we've been looking at golf. We just saw Phil do everything Phil, a PGA Championship. You think your son could uh, maybe mm -hmm. make it... Uh, on the PGA Tour someday. I don't know, no man. Pressure. That's a that's a people don't realize what an athlete Phil is, what a freak he is. Um, it's a, people don't realize that that's the one sport. Well, maybe it's every sport where people think they're closer to them. Like back in the day at ESPN, a lot of us joined the same golf club here in Connecticut, like 15, 20 of us when we first started, you know, going back to Mike Greenberg and everybody back then. And, and I was, a, I was probably the best of the lot by a little bit. Ooh. And I was at my peak when I was a pretty good player, like a one, two handicap, could shoot around par occasionally in the sixties. I remember Greeny saying to me, Gucci, you, you should go on the champion's tour. I think you got a shot. And it's like, you know, 
they have no idea how far away that is. It's like not even close. In fact, I hosted a couple of ESPN events. We, we went to Cabo, and it was like a zero handicap against Chris DeMarco and like a nine handicap against Tom Watson. And they gave them the strokes. Tom gave him a stroke a hole, and DeMarco gave this one handicap a couple. They blew him away. It was like the, the, the match was over after eight holes. It wasn't the greatest television show for Christmas Day. But uh, so that's how it, – it's a, it's a huge gap. It's a – it's it's like almost lottery stuff. It's almost lottery odds, you know. And so I hope Jackson, but you know, be prepared for have a backup plan. Yes, well, I mean, yeah, especially with sports, uh, you know, nothing is is given. Yeah. But uh, Kenny Main did hit the fifty foot eagle putt. You did. I saw that happen. So before I, I know that we have to go to break. I'm getting that, but just one name. Who is the best golfer, ESPN or ESPN alum? In your mind? Well, on air, it would be me. I, yeah. Off air, there's probably some young whippersnappers who probably could get me now. But uh, it wasn't a deep pool. It wasn't a deep pool, okay. Jake. It was, uh, it was a lot of hackers, a lot of weed whackers. Just bought bagging everyone out there. But you got to vote for yourself. That's what they say. Got to vote for your, yourself. I'm a journalist. I have to tell you the truth. Yeah, true. We're just, we always tell the truth here on Drinks of Things. Okay, we got to take a time out. We'll be back with a whole lot more with John Bucci Gross from ESPN. Don't go anywhere. Bobo! Hey, this is John Cooper, head coach of your Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning. And I just had Drinks with Things. Subscribe on YouTube and follow us on all social media at Fubo Sports. Hey guys, we've had an awesome time drinking and binking here with ESPN's John Bucci-Gross. And Bucci, before we let you go, you hinted at it earlier, but who is going to win the cup? I'm going to stick with Tampa, JSB. You know, I love Colorado, but I just wonder with Vasilevsky, Hedman, Kucherov, three Hall of Famers at each layer, I got to go with the Bolts. Yes, Bolts and our friend of the show, John Cooper, who is Legend. also a whiskey fan. So. Legend. Love Coop. He'll drop in every once in yep. a while on the text. Totally random, non-hockey. Always good to hear from him. Coop is like the most non-coach coach because he's the longest tenured coach in the NHL, but he's also like a super cool guy. So oh. I think that means you win the cup, but I don't know anything at all. This is sad. Bucci, where can we find you next? Turn that frown upside down. Uh, you know, <laughs> just doing the sports center. I appear every now and then over the summer. Then again, hopefully, uh, the NHL, once it comes to ESPN this October, only five months away, like people don't realize next season's five months away. Yeah. So I really just want to immerse myself in hockey, NHL, college hockey. Hope I can still do the frozen forts in Boston next year, which is a great hockey city. I'm uh, going to Vegas in a couple of years, which I can't wait. So yeah, I just, I want to be all hockey all the time until I walk out that door. Yeah, well, we want to see you be all hockey all the time. Fingers crossed that you are doing tons of it next season on ESPN. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And, guys, you know where to find us and all of our episodes. Are, I cannot believe we've had 100 episodes. I've had 100 drinks over the course of two years, not just in like a week, but that used, that's the old me. You can find all of our old episodes on uh, YouTube at Fubo Sports. And until next time, bottoms up, bitches. <laughs>